Hey everyone, Nick here at Verge24 again. Honored to be doing these sidebar interviews. I am here with the awesome Rich Powell, CEO of SIBA. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I am excellent. Before we start, I have to ask a fun question. What is your favorite Halloween candy? Um, my son has a peanut allergy, so I get to eat all of the Snickers that he um, gets and and he can't have, uh, okay. which isn't isn't great for, for me. But, yeah. uh, but it's yeah, still Snickers. teamwork. Yeah, it's teamwork. <laughs> it's teamwork. And I'm keeping him safe. That's what I like to say. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm going to dive right on in. So SIBA has been connected to Verge since its inception, and it's just been exciting to see you guys grow. And so with that, I just want to ask, what role do corporations play in leading the energy transition, and how has that evolved since SIBA's founding? Um, well, for those, those that aren't familiar of, with SIBA, the Clean Energy Buyers Association is the largest group of major corporate buyers of clean energy. So we now have more than 200 companies that have committed to um, buying clean energy on, on some timeline. And collectively, they've made a huge impact. So our members have bought, um, just in the U.S. alone, 84 gigawatts oh. of clean energy. Uh, that's mostly wind and solar today. Uh, for comparison, that would be like more than all of the renewables in California and Texas put together. Oh, wow. So it's the single largest demand signal for clean energy uh, in the United States. And it's been really, really helpful in deploying more technology yeah. and bringing down costs on the grid so that everybody can get access to the technology. Oh, that is just like mind-blowming. <laughs> um, next question. What has been the biggest like challenges for companies that, that are facing adapting to the rapidly changing yep. energy landscape yep. right now? <laughs> uh, well, I'll give you two things. So um, uh, early on, when our company started to work with uh, developers, particularly for wind and solar projects, um, th there was just a lot of space on the grid yeah. and, and energy demand wasn't growing. And so it's, you know, nothing is straightforward, but it's relatively straightforward to add more variable resources like wind and solar that are very low cost mm -hmm. into an existing grid, as long as that grid is, is flat. But as more and more and more of these resources came on, the grid has started to get really gummed up. Yeah. And so now in many parts of the country, interconnection queues are very, very long. Permitting delays are very, very long. And we don't have enough transmission to support all of the wind and solar that we want to bring onto the grid. Yeah. So we're, we're working on bringing down all those barriers. The other thing is, as the grid starts to grow, we, we can't only add variable resources to the grid. Now we also need to add firm capacity to the grid. So we need other things that yeah. come alongside wind and solar. And that's all kinds of things. That's like long duration storage and it's enhanced geothermal and it's even advanced nuclear technologies. But a lot of those things aren't, aren't ready for commercial like prime time yet. So our members are also starting to work on, on maturing those technologies in the same way that we helped mature solar and wind over the last 10 years. Yeah. And uh, so it's an exciting time. It is very exciting. <laughs> um, well, I have one last question for you. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you think corporations need most in order to make a substantial impact on decarbonizing the grid? <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, unfortunately, I come back to the, the delays and the permitting. You know, we, yeah. we can only work as fast. We can only bring on as much clean energy as the system will allow and as regulations will allow and as the whole complex bureaucracy that is our that is our grid system in the United States will allow. And unfortunately, we're seeing delays at, at all levels. Uh, and so, um, for example, right now, there's legislation moving through Congress that would start to address some of these things and let us build transmission lines mm -hmm. faster and speed up the process for approvals for new projects and, and, and frankly, give almost auto permitting to some kinds of projects in some, some kinds of places. And that's, that's the kind of thing we're going to need if we're going to keep that trajectory going. I mean, what we've built today is amazing, and it is only a fraction of the clean energy that we right. will need if we're gonna bring the entire grid to carbon free over the next decade or two. Yeah. And so uh, we need a step change in speed and scale in all this. And we're not going to get that step change if we keep on with the system we have today. We need to reform our system, mm -hmm. and we need to build more transmission and more generation and upgrade the existing grid as fast as we can around the country. Oh, my gosh. Well, Rich, it has been such a pleasure. I think I'm going to go out and grab a Snickers <laughs> after this. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, it's been incredible. Okay. But um, any other plans after Verge, like Halloween? or? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm getting on a flight very early tomorrow morning to rush home and get back for trick-or-treating tomorrow. Got it. Yeah, Got it. So it's plan. all happening, everyone. That's the plan. <laughs> that's the plan. Thank oh. you so much. Really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>